From cruise liners throwing massive parties to the battle-hardened warships in the U.S. Navy, today we're going to take a look at the top 15 largest ships in the world. Number 15. 50 Let Pobody If you're used to living in a warmer climate, then the idea of an icebreaker ship may sound a bit foreign. So let's go ahead and break the ice with the first entry on this list. The ship 50 Lit Pobidi is currently the largest icebreaker ship in the world and bursts her way through the tough conditions while waving the Russian flag. The name 50 Lit Pobidi roughly translates from Russian as 50 years of victory, referring to the Soviet Union's victory over the Axis powers in World War II. This huge icebreaker runs on nuclear power and it has great maneuverability, can travel at a top speed of just over 21 knots. Even in the dead of winter, this ship is going full speed ahead. The Victory is a whopping 524 feet long, with a displacement of nearly 29,000 tons, and she can rip through the ice up to 9 feet thick. That's pretty strong. There are plenty of other great icebreaker ships out in the world, but when it comes to sailing the waters of the Arctic, no one's even coming close to this thing. The fact that she's been doing it for about 30 years is just a testament to her prowess. She's so well known in her home country of Russia that you can even see her on a stamp. And when she's not carrying cargo, you can book her for an Arctic tour and sail around the North Pole. Just make sure you bring a whole lot of layers. Number 14. Oasis Class Cruise Ships If you're going to have a great cruise ship, then it's better to be big, because the bigger the ship, the more people and amenities you can pack in there, so the more money you're going to rake in each year. So when it comes to massive cruise ships, look no further than the Oasis Class. As of now, there are five of these world-famous Oasis-class cruise ships, the Oasis of the Seas, Symphony of the Seas, Allure, Wonder, and Harmony of the Seas, with another sister ship officially ordered and hopefully open for business by 2024. But it's really the class's flagship vessel, the Symphony of the Seas, that really made waves when she first hit the water in 2018. The moment she left port on her maiden voyage, she broke the record for the world's largest cruise ship. While just a few feet shorter than her sister, the Harmony, she beat everyone out in gross tonnage, breaking nearly 230,000 tons of volume, with a length close to 1,200 feet. She's got a lot of baggage, and the Symphony alone has 18 decks, with 16 of them purely for guest use, and 22 different restaurants. This thing sounds more like a city on the ocean than she does a vessel, especially because the Oasis and her sister vessels are all broken up into different neighborhoods, each with their own vibe. It's pretty wild, to say the least. It's a good thing these cruises last only a few weeks at a time, because when you're on one of these massive Oasis glass ships, you're never going to want to leave. Number 13. Dockwise Vanguard You would be wise not to miss out on this next massive ship. The Dockwise Vanguard is without a doubt one of the coolest, most impressive heavy lift ships in the world, and the crown jewel of the Dutch company's Dockwise fleet. She's been the largest ship of her kind in the world since 2013, and it doesn't seem like anything else is gunning for her crown anytime soon. But just how big is this heavy lifter? Well, the Dockwise Vanguard comes in at over 900 feet in length, and she's got a width of about 260 feet. This thing is not kidding around. Plus, she's got a cargo capacity of 117,000 tons. But why in the world do you need a ship this big? Only a vessel like the Dockwise Vanguard is capable of hauling around some huge, precious cargo like oil rigs and even other boats. Some of her most well-known hauls have been the Chevron Malo platform, one of the largest oil platforms in the world, and even Malaysia's Armada Intrepid. So if you ever have a superstructure out on the ocean that needs to be replaced or retired, this is the ship that you call. So far, there's yet to be a job that's too big for the Vanguard. Number 12. Battleless class super tankers. For better or worse, the world still runs on oil, and while some major companies and corporations are working to turn that around, we're still drilling for liquid gold in the meantime. The battleless class of super tankers are the ones that really help get those barrels from point A to point B. The flagship vessel, the Battleless, was built back in 1976 by the Shell Oil Company. The shipbuilders did such a great job that more were ordered. The Bellyama, the Pierre Guillaume, and the Prairial, with the latter being completed in 1979. The original Battleless was nearly 1,500 feet long and had a deadweight tonnage of well over a quarter million tons. In fact, these Battleless class tankers were so large that they could never even dream of fitting through the Suez Canal. Luckily, though, they were all built specifically to fit through the Antifa oil terminal in France. 
All that really mattered to this class of super tankers was moving oil, and they were the best at it. These battleless class tankers spent most of their days traveling back and forth between the Persian Gulf and most of northern Europe, and were responsible for the majority of the region's oil supply. And while they all played incredibly important roles in the European oil trade, they were all eventually scrapped, with the final sister vessel having been sold and broken down in 2003. C'est la vie. Number 11. Queen Mary II Anybody who's anybody has heard of this one. The Queen Mary II is one of the most recognizable ocean liners in the world, and for good reason. Aside from offering some great vacations, she's absolutely huge. This British transatlantic ocean liner was christened in 2003, and 19 years later she's the only ocean liner in the world still in service. She really is one of a kind, but just how big is the Queen Mary II? Well, for starters, she's well over 1,100 feet long, 236 feet high, with a gross tonnage of 150,000 tons. Yeah, she's pretty big, but she needs all of that room because she offers her passengers 14 decks and the crew another four, and has a capacity for 2,695 happy travelers, and requires a crew of 1,200 people to keep things up and running around the clock. She's living proof that being big isn't always so easy, and when you step inside, you'll see how the Queen Mary II lives up to her name, because not only is she incredibly elegant, but she is palatial as well. Being on board the last ocean liner in the world is really like being on board a floating castle. Number 10. Q-Max Where should I even start with this next entry? The Q-Max class of ships is liquefied natural gas container ships. Slightly different from an oil tanker, the Q-Max class vessels aren't just the largest of their kind, but they're also some of the largest of any ship in the world. The very first Q-Max, the Moza, made her maiden voyage in 2009, and since then she now has a total of 14 sister ships. That's one big family, and one big ship because each Q-Max is about 1,132 feet long, with a gross tonnage of over 162,000 tons. Each ship is longer than the equivalent of seven American football fields, so just imagine how long it would take to run from one end of the vessel to the other. Each of the 14 sister ships has a beam length of 170 feet across, and each vessel docks at the LNG terminals in Qatar, which is what the Q and their name stands for. And despite their massive size, each Q-Max can make it through the Suez Canal as long as the captain knows what they're doing, because we all know what happens when a vessel gets stuck in there. Number 9. Arctica Taking the ninth spot on our list is another Soviet-era icebreaker, the Arctica. Now retired, the Arctica was a bit of a doozy, because she overall had a nice length of 569 feet and 112 foot long beam. Plus, she's got a history that's as big as her. Yeah, it's not a surprise that the name Arctica literally translates to Arctic in English, letting you know just what this icebreaker is made for. The Arctica was in service from 1975 all the way till 2008, and just two years after her icy maiden voyage, she was the first ship to ever reach the North Pole. Sadly, neither Santa Claus nor her elves were anywhere to be found. But Arctica's capability was the real gift to the Soviet Union, who were in a race with the United States to see who was the best at just about everything and who could be the first to do it as well. So on this front, they won big time. The specific North Pole expedition was also dedicated to the 60th anniversary of the October Revolution, making it a double historic win for the Soviets. Arctica was nuclear powered and could cut through the ice for a duration of seven and a half months with 189 crew members on board and at a max speed of 18 knots. By 2005, Arctica was also the first nautical vessel to cover one million miles and was the first civilian ship to spend a full year at sea. She had earned every bit of the rest she's had since retiring. Number 8. CSCL Globe in November of 2014, the biggest container transport ship in the world was christened with the name CSCL Globe. Ordered by the China Shipping Container Lines just one year prior, the CSCL Globe was the first in a series of five ships with a cargo capacity of 19,020 foot containers, or TEU. It was an incredibly big deal at the time and set the bar for everything that would come after. You could say that the CSCL Globe is the OG of giant freight ships. The big ship was bought by Hyundai Heavy Industries and deployed across the Asia-Europe trade loop. But just how big is this record breaker? Well, you're looking at a length of over 1,300 feet long and a gross tonnage of 187,000 tons with a 194-foot-long beam. 
The CSCL Globe is working with an electronically controlled engine that outperforms ships of her size in terms of engine efficiency and burns 20% less fuel per TEU. And perhaps even more amazing is that this massive ship only needs a crew of 23 people to operate. Just how much did the CSCL Globe and her sister ships cost to build? You're looking at a bill of 750 million smackers, but they're worth every penny. Number 7. Globe Tick Tokyo One of three giant oil tankers, the Globe Tick Tokyo made her maiden voyage in February of 1974. She comes in at well over 1,200 feet long with almost half a million in deadweight tonnage and a beam length of 203 feet. She's huge. At the time, she was one of the biggest oil tankers in the world, right next to her sister ship, the Globe Tick London. The Tokyo was built by Ishikawajima Harima Heavy Industries in Japan, with a steam-powered turbine churning out 45,000 horsepower, geared to a single shaft, and could reach a top speed of 17 knots. She was incredibly nimble for a ship of her size. She even had a turning circle shorter than three times her length, and could stop in under three miles with just her single screw in reverse. If that fact is too boring, then just remember that the next time you try to parallel park or make a three-point turn on a busy street. The Globe Tick Tokyo was big, but she sure knew how to move. She operated with a great deal of pride for 13 years before being discontinued in 1986, and both she and her sister the London were sadly scrapped for parts in 2003. The Globe Tick Tokyo lives on through the ships that bear her parts. Number 6. TI-Class Super Tanker Okay, we're slowly but surely climbing our way up to the top. We've seen some big oil tankers already, but the TI-class super tankers are some of the largest of their kind still in operation. Belonging to the Tankers International Fleet, the TI-class consists of four tankers, the Africa, Asia, Europe, and Oceania. Each mega tanker here was built by the Daewoo Shipping and Marine Engineering Company from South Korea in 2003. All four tankers have a gross tonnage of around 234,000 tons, with an average length of 1,247 feet, and can hold their own on the ocean at just under 17 knots when they're fully loaded with crude oil. But where they stand out is with their beam lengths at 223 feet across. These are some seriously wide ships and look incredibly funky if you're staring at one of them from head on. Number 5. Queen Elizabeth Ships of course, the largest aircraft carriers in the UK Royal Navy owe their name to none other than Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers are the third largest carriers in the world, the biggest warships ever built for the British Navy, and the second largest of the non-US warships after the Japanese Yamato-class battleships. They certainly live up to their prestige. The HMS Queen Elizabeth was commissioned in December of 2017, and the HMS Prince of Wales was commissioned just in 2020. Both vessels are utterly massive, with a displacement of close to 72,000 tons and are about 918 feet long. Both vessels feature the latest and greatest in wartime technology and automated systems, but only require a crew of 679 for combat operation, making them some of the most advanced vessels to hit the world's oceans. Number 4. Club Med 2 Club Med 2 is without a doubt the coolest cruise ship in the world. It doesn't look like your typical cruise or ocean liner. Instead, it looks like a giant white pirate ship. She's a five-masted staysail schooner under total computer control. Club Med 2's sails are all operated electronically and add the power of the wind to her diesel electric power. She was first launched in 1992 in Le Havre, France. It's been around for a long time, but she's obviously doing something right because she's also one of the hottest cruise ships around and also happens to be one of the largest of her kind in the world. So how big is this thing? Well, the Club Med 2 can carry up to 386 passengers and a crew of just over 200. She's about 630 feet long, 260 feet high with a draft of 17 feet. Plus, she's got eight different decks where people can relax, eat, and of course, party. You can see her sailing around the Adriatic and Mediterranean Sea, flowing through larger anchorages that the larger vessels just can't reach. Number 3. Yamato The Imperial Japanese Navy still holds the honor of having built the largest battleship in history with their Yamato class. Commissioned in 1941, it was 863 feet long and carried guns with barrels of over 18 inches wide, some of the largest to ever be included on a warship. 
and while the Yamato wasn't the greatest ship against the Allied aircraft, it was built with one purpose in mind, to sink enemy battleships quickly and efficiently. During its service, the Yamato survived plenty of battles and even managed to walk away from a torpedo blast, albeit in need of some repairs. And although it fought for the losing side, the Yamato was able to hold its own even if it was just prolonging the inevitable. But many people don't realize that Japan had an incredibly strong navy during World War II, with one of the Yamato's finest hours occurring during the defense of Leyte Island in the Philippines, when the U.S. Navy was on the offensive. Yamato was on the front lines along with most of the Japanese Navy, and helped to sink one Allied aircraft carrier and another three destroyers. But every dog has his day, and the Allied naval fleets managed to sink the Yamato in 1945, when hundreds of their aircraft bombed the battleship on their way to Okinawa. Number 2. Burge Empress Every emperor needs an empress. Another Japanese oil tanker built in the amazing shipyards of China, the Burge Empress was one of the biggest ships to ever sail the Seven Seas. It had an incredible length of 1,250 feet and a beam of 223 feet across. She had a gross tonnage of over 200,000 tons and a deadweight tonnage of 423,000 tons, which gave her a draft of 75 feet. So needless to say, the Burge Empress was heavy, and she could hold about 10,000 more tons worth of cargo than the Emperor, especially with her two stall-level turbines that kept her at a steady 16 knots in the water. But she was also an incredibly respected oil tanker, operated for nearly 30 years. This is more than most other giant oil tankers can say, especially considering the energy crisis of the early 2000s, where the price of oil contributed to staggering levels of global inflation. But all good things must come to an end, and not even the Burj Empress was safe from the changing of the times. She was eventually sent to Bangladesh in 2004 to be, you guessed it, scrapped. Number 1. Nock Nevis Formerly known as the Sea Wise Giant, the Nock Nevis is the largest ship of all time. As long as she was heavy, she was a self-propelled vessel built in 1974, with a fully laden displacement of over 72,000 tons and over 1,500 feet long, and her beam 225 feet wide. The Nock Nevis lugged oil around the ocean, but was too big to fit through the likes of the English Channel or the Suez Canal. She was taller than the Empire State Building in New York. After all, as you can bet that something this big, this majestic, has a rich history. The Nock Nevis has been through a lot in her day, having been damaged in 1988 and even sinking in the Strait of Hormuz during the Iran-Iraq War. Luckily though, she was too important to be left at the bottom of the sea, so she was quickly salvaged and repaired before hitting the ocean again. I guess you just can't keep a good ship down. She changed owners a few times and by 2009 was finally beached and sold for scrap, but she was so big that it took a full year to get everything out of there. Shipbuilders are certainly trying, but it's going to be tough to top the Nock Nevis. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more Top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.